Hi! Today I'm going to show you how you can load images in Go.4 at runtime. This can be done either by using the file system here to select something from one of your drives and grab a file like this and select it. Or you can drag and drop files into Godot. I'm going to be using images as an example, but there are similar ways to load other things like videos or JSON files or whatever it is you might want to load. Okay, so starting out we have a simple scene here. We have some color regs just for showing where files are going to go. We have a texture rect here which already has the go.icon icon in it. We have a button that just says load image from file system. Here I just put a label in here so we can see where we're supposed to drop an image file. And the actual texture that's going to show the image file I just put on top of that so it's going to show once we have it. Now none of that does anything yet. We have a script here on the test scene which is empty. You could split this up into multiple scripts but for simplicity I'm going to put everything into this one script here. So for starters let's hook up the button so we have somewhere the program can start. So with the pressed signal of the button here we want to open the pop-up. So for that we need to add it first. So let's go into the scene tree and we can say file dialog. Now the file dialog is invisible by default. We're going to make it visible here so we can see what's happening. This already does a lot of things automatically so there isn't actually that much to do but we do need to set up what mode we want it to have. So we can set the file mode. It's currently set to save by default. We want it to open a file. So let's open a file. There we go. It's going to rename the top here. We can move this around a bit. We don't want this to be in the upper left corner otherwise it's going to look weird. Instead let's see we can put it into the center of the main window and that should be fine. Let's just play to see where it ends up. There we go it ends up here. Currently it doesn't show the file list which isn't ideal so we are going to resize it a bit. Let's just say the size currently is 159. Let's just set it to 300 and that should be enough. Okay now we have that. We want a subfolder. I'm just going to set e colon slash um, test steer is what I called my directory. We have our directory but currently we don't have access to that because access is set to resources so that's only what is shipped with the game. I want to be able to access the entire file system so anything on the computer we want to access. And now if we do this again because it removed that for some reason. Um, okay that's fine we don't need the slash at the end. And now it's going to start out by default in the correct folder. And it doesn't actually let us go above that folder so we can't go to parent roots from this one by default. Now. We have that. Is there anything we're missing? It has a proper size. I think this is fine. I think we can work with this. We want this to be invisible by default. Yeah, now it moves to the correct spot too. Um, we want to go in here and say if the button is pressed, do file dialog dot pop up. And that's going to make it visible and make it work. One more thing I just remember, I do want it to close down again. Here, hide on OK, because if you don't hide on OK, that can have the benefit that you can manually check is the file you have a proper file format, is this readable, is this usable and stuff, and only close it once you're sure that the file is accurate. I'm not going to bother about this for the sake of the tutorial getting too long otherwise, but yeah, the general idea is if you want to do that, just disable the pop-up manually instead. So what we're doing here is we take the file selected uh, signal since we have it set into file read mode anyway, attach that here. And now once a file has been selected and the OK button is pressed or it's at the Enter button is pressed or a file is double clicked, there's a few options, we get the path to that file here. Now this path allows us to actually load the file. How do we do this? Well, let's start by saying we want an image. Our, our file is an image. We're going to just assume that it's an image. Uh, in reality, you probably would want to make sure that it ends on PNG, JPEG or some other file ending that's compatible. So we're just going to say, it, we're just going to assume it's an image, image.new, 
and say image dot load and our path. So we pass our path in here and this image variable is now going to have a loaded version of this image. Now this image isn't usable as a texture yet, so we can't actually apply it to any uh, texture act or sprite or whatever. So for that, let's make uh, an image texture. Same thing as above, just with an image texture and then image texture dot set image, the image we created before. So now our image object is used as the image of the texture, which then can be applied either to 3D objects, 2D stuff, pretty much anything you want to show in the game, you can use this texture for. So we're going to add it to our texture act. So we can just say, hola texture rack. there we go, it completes the path for us, dot texture equals image texture. And now let's just test this to make sure I didn't forget anything. Press the button. The thing shows up, select an image, open, and it shows up here. Pretty simple. And you can, of course, adjust all of these things a bit still. There are still a lot of settings you can look at in the file dialog. For example, you can instead use the system owned file dialog. That one looks a bit different then, and there are some other options there. Let's see, where is it? There we go. If we use the native dialog, just for showing what that would look like. Ah, I didn't set it to back to invisible where it should be. Okay, and now it opens the usual, in my case, Windows file dialog, otherwise whatever it is your system has. Okay, so that's fine, we have that. Now for actually loading an image by drag and drop. Now we have a similar process here, and let's just start by adding a ready function again. Function ready, and we connect to a signal here. There's a, there's a signal for dropped files that is in our root. So we can do get tree dot get root and files drop. That's the signal we want. Now we want to connect to the signal and we connect it to a function. We haven't made a function yet, so I'll just say on files dropped. Files plural because uh, you can drop more than one file at a time, even though we currently only actually want people to drop one file. So what we can do is function on files dropped. So it stops complaining. This gives us a list of files and we can say path equals files at position zero. So we just take the first file. If there's only one file, we get that one. If there's multiple, we get the first one. If you actually want people to drop multiple files at once, there you go. You can use this array and access any part of it, but we're not doing that right now. Now at this point, we basically just do the same thing we did here. I'm just going to copy this stuff over create an image, we create an image texture from the image and then we can apply it, except we want to apply this one to a different place. So this is texture rect with drop is what I called it. It's also just a texture rect. I just renamed it so I could recognize it in code. And now there's one thing here. Right now this would work anywhere. So if I drop an image, let's see where's my folder. Did, did I close my folder? So now if I have my te test directory here, and I take this, um, one of these PNGs, I have the Necromancer PNG here, I just drop this anywhere, it shows up there. We don't really want this to work anywhere, we want this to only work in this box. If for whatever it is you're making you want it to work anywhere, there you go, you're done, it's already working. We're going to restrict it to this box, so let's just make sure that the mouse is in the correct spot, because if you want to be able to drop files in separate locations, you need to make sure that you're in the correct one, right? So I'm going to make a function for it, mouse over control, and pass it a node. Now we're going to assume that this node is a control node. Uh, I guess we can say type control, and that should be fine. And we want var mouse equals get global mouse position. So we have uh, something a bit shorter than having to call get global mouse position over and over again. And now we can just say if mouse.x is less than node.global position.x or let's just insert that a bit so we can tell it apart. Mouse.x is greater than node.global position.x plus node.size.x. So these are all the things that we have if we go into any of these 
and we go into layout and we go into transform. Then here we have a size, we have a position, the global position just makes sure that it's going to line, uh, line up with our mouse and not be relative to the parent. Um, I used the wrong slash. And then the same thing for Y. Now, if any of that is true, we return false because that means that at some point our mouse doesn't overlap properly. Otherwise we return false. Now if we have this, we can just go in here, add an if mouse over control, pass it the control node we want, which in our case is dollar texture something or other. Here we go. And if that, then do all of the stuff in here, otherwise just do nothing. So I'm just going to tap that all over and otherwise it's just going to return and we're fine. Now let's see, um, wait, I, I returned false twice. True here, of course. Let's see if I have anything missing or if it works. Because if things go correctly, this should ignore here. See, I can drop files all of these places fine and nothing happens. But if I drop in here, Anachromance appears. And this is it. There isn't actually all that much code here and you pretty quickly have a setup to be able to load files on the fly. In this case images, but if you look at the documentation, you can find similar functions to create pretty much any kind of asset you might need for something. Anyway, this will be all for today. Bye.